Hi there, buns. So gathering relics, oof. I won't be including the Fisher one here because one, I haven't done it, and two, seems pretty straightforward, so it may not need a guide, but let me know if you want one. This will also have chapters so you can reference this for any different steps and find them easily. Make sure to limit break three that like button to give me good pets for the work. I have been enjoying the grindier content, but Botanist Miner don't have as many gimmicks as the Crafter Relics video I'd put out, which thanks for all the likes and comments on that. It seems y'all really enjoyed that video. Let's start. Both Miner and Botanist have the same layout and essentially the same rotation and goal. There were a few things that I came across that made my life way easier once I figured that out and saved me a shit ton of time. You want to make sure that you are around level 80 or higher. Honestly, you should not do this if you're not level 90 as you have other things to worry about rather than relics if you're not 90 yet. Plus, you won't have access to some abilities that really make this go a lot quicker, like the Eureka Moment proc for getting extra hits on collectibles. I popped both of these relics out in a little over four to five hours, but I wasn't just mindlessly gathering. I did focus on it in order to maximize the relic. You will need high cordials. You can get these by gathering scripts. Odds are you will have some already, but you'll need quite a bit, maybe around 100 to be safe, as you want to make sure you pop these every second when on cooldown. Try to avoid using the regular ones as you can easily get high cordials and that 100 GP is going to make the world a difference when you need it. The next thing you'll need to make sure is that you have melds of GP and food. Don't go out of your way, but if you have material slots left and don't have melds in them at all, you can meld GP, which will give you a little bit extra hits when it counts. Also pick up some food as well. We don't need to worry about necessarily specific stats. This is just old content, but the GP will make an overall difference. While gathering, you will have a lesser stat equipped tool that you'll be working on to upgrade which is your sky steel tool so that's why it's really important to have level 90 gear as you'll be pulling the other stats from that gear now the first important tip about these gathering relics is noticing that these give two locations for certain steps of the relic i didn't realize that this was actually very important i thought there'd be no difference but in fact there's a gigantic key change and that is the buffs that spawned on the nodes each cluster of nodes about six spawns with certain buffs. Now, I don't know the rhyme or reason, but it is important nevertheless. Let's take an example of the red rim. These buffs usually are attempts increased, which is good, but then we get gatherer's boon at certain percentages. I got 30% and 50%. These are decent, but they are not the superior buffs that we are looking for. Going to the other area to the Sea of Clouds, if we check these buffs, you'll notice that there's not really any Gatherer's Boon. Instead, we're getting far better buffs, which are yield increase, attempts, and of course the occasional non-buff, which can happen on either node. The yield increase buff for nodes is the area you want to choose if there are multiple areas to choose from. I have noticed there's always a more Gatherer's Boon heavy area and then a yield increase area. For the steps that just have one location, you're just going to have to suffer through, but I did figure out which locations were better for Miner and Botanist. For Miner, the oddly specific Obsidian and Mineral Sand, the OK Vinduvana is the better nodes. Oddly specific Squirrel, Landborn Ether Sand, the Dragon Struggle had better nodes. Oddly specific Primordial Ore and Primordial Asphalt, the Aqueduct has better nodes. For botanist, the oddly specific chestnut log, leafborn ether sand, the valley of the fallen rainbow had better notes. For oddly specific primordial log and resin, the better location was papa's tree. The next important thing about the gathering relics is this is not, and I repeat, not a blow your GP load all on one node. This is a marathon and not a sprint and you'll be grinding for hours and using your GP to supplement nodes with weak or no bonuses is far more important. The number one goal that I had in mind was getting three items per strike no matter the bonuses on the node. Never use GP to zero as the next node may require a better use of GP than the current node you are on. Example being, if the yield output is increased and you get three items per node without having to use any GP, but you may think to yourself you're going to maximize and get more, don't because the next node that you go to could have zero buffs associated and now you're just collecting one at a time. The next thing, don't cap on GP. If it's full, use at least a gatherer's boon buff in order to increase your chances of getting extra items. Capping GP, bad. You want to stay in the 5 to 700 range as you never know which buffs are going to be present on the nodes until you get there, so you'll always have to be prepared. 
The other guideline I followed for myself is one of these items are a regular item that you'll see all the time. And the other one is a hidden item that only shows up infrequently or occasionally, or you have to use luck of the pioneer in order to see it. If the hidden item is showing, focus on doing that one first. Let's take oddly specific amber and bobble, for example. Because bobble is popped without me having to use a like a pioneer, which shows hidden items on the node, I'm going to focus on that one. The bonus to the node also applies to the hidden item. What I personally did was if the bonus to the node was plus yield four, I would just luck of the pioneer. Getting potentially five of the hidden items for 200 GP is a steal and should be prioritized when doing these relic grinds. Following these guidelines, I ended up hitting the normal item needed and the hidden item needed around the same time, since you need far more normal items anyway. The general timeframes for each step of these relics is as follows. Step one to three took about 15 minutes each. I wasn't perfectly utilizing the above guidelines either, so it may be even quicker for you. Step four increased to a little bit about 20 to 25 minutes, but this is factoring in bathroom breaks, pauses, IRL stuff. So right here we have about 20 to an hour and five for the first four steps. You could possibly go up to step four and take a break here and come back to step five because it really felt like a big time sink compared to the last four steps. It took me personally about an hour for just step five alone. That being said, it's not hard at all. It's just tedious, of course. Step five is like any other collectible, but I will go over it. You almost do the opposite here than the last four steps that you want to blow your load on each of these collectibles to try to get as many as possible in one node. In the botanist case, oddly delicate feather is worth seven turn-ins at max collectability. The breakdown collectability for each of these is 400 to 699 is one turn in, 700 to 999 is three turn ins, and 1000 collectability, which is max, is seven turn ins. You can see why I wanted to shoot for 1000 collectability. I have seen a lot of other Reddit posts in my research saying go for three on every node for a more consistent turn in value. You can pick your poison here. I personally found it better to blow the load on seven and then get three when I had zero GP and waiting for a cooldown of cordials. Essentially, the rotation is scrutiny, meticulous, scrutiny, meticulous, and then either scour or meticulous to finish it off. The hope here is to get meticulous woodmans to proc so you don't reduce integrity and you can collect as many as possible at seven turn in value. The perk of having GP here left over is you can use Aegis Words, which recovers a hit and could potentially proc Wise World, which would recover another hit. I got this a few times and it drastically decreased the time, but it is RNG if you get those procs. And with that, this is my complete guide for Gatherer Relics. If you want to know how to get the crafting relics in under 8 hours, you can find that video at the end of this one or in my vast library of Final Fantasy guides and tutorials. If you want to watch more, then you can click here.